Hello and welcome back to AmbiV. I'm Casper and today we're going to take a look at using the Sniper EFI to trigger electric fans. When installing electric fans on a car that previously did not have electric fans, you need to figure out the electrical routing system yourself. So the two options really available are to use a switch directly or to switch a relay. A switch directly requires all of the draw of the fan to pass through a switch, whether it's the ground or the positive. This means you have a much higher probability of damaging the relay, plus you have a much more significant amount of wire that is carrying all of that amperage. In the case of a relay, you can mount the relay fairly close to the fan and run the majority of the draw through the relay and only need a very small signal to trigger the relay to engage. That will be what we are doing in this case. So using a couple simple relay kits that I purchased on Amazon, I will be putting in a very basic setup that would not normally go in a car for the long term. This kit comes with two basic little 30 amp breakers that we will use in lieu of a more substantial breaker system that can be manually reset or a fuse. It also comes with a simple relay and a simple chunk of wiring harness for the relay. We will be using the grounding signal from the Sniper EFI to engage the relay, which will provide power to these fans. We first need to decide where we can fit this in the engine bay and how long it's going to be installed to determine how much weather protection it actually needs. In this case, I'm not going to leave this in here the way it is for very long, so I'm just going to mount them right next to the fans to make the routing of wiring easier, and I'm not going to incorporate the wires into any of the looms in the car. If this were a more professional install, you would want to incorporate your power feeds and your additional trigger wires and all that into the actual looms and rewrap your looms to make them look cleaner and provide additional protection to the wires. So let's go ahead and get under the hood and take a look at which wires we need to work with and what we have to do the installation. So when installing this system, the first thing I had to do was determine where the triggers come from from the Sniper EFI. In this case, I zip tied the accessory loom and connector to this support brace and then grabbed the green and the blue wire that's fan one and fan two from the basic pin out and put them in a sheathing to run over to where i intend to install my relays in a more formal installation you would want to run those probably inside the car integrate them into a loom and bring them back out and give them more protection i only provided them enough protection for re relatively short-term testing this car won't see a lot of inclement weather, so I'm not too worried about them getting destroyed. So as you can see here, we have two relays tucked next to the overflow bottle for the radiator. I've color coded the relays with painter's tape, blue for blue and green for green, to match the EFI wires so that I know which should be being triggered at which time. I then also pulled over some red primary wire from the battery to provide a positive signal, or a positive current rather, to each of these relays. Then I added a plug to the end and attached a fan to each relay's positive. I then grounded the fans over here on the firewall simply to give it a ground that's clean and that I have control over that's a short run. Now a relay needs essentially four wires to be in play to make it work. You have a current in and a current out where you're drawing your current across whether it's a ground or whether it's a positive. And then you have your signals and your signal needs to be either positive or negative. They need to actually be different in order to close the relay. So in this case, I know the Sniper EFI is sending a grounding signal in here to trigger the relay. So I need the other side to have a constant positive or I need it to be a switched positive from the ignition. Since the ignition wiring is a long ways away and this isn't a permanent setup, I just simply wired in the positive to the battery so that it's always engaged. That way at any point in time, whenever this signal wire on the other side gets grounded, it will tr attempt to turn on the fan. If this were a permanent setup and a daily driver, I would not do this because it opens the potential to have a fan run while the car is shut off and run the battery dead. But in this case, the ECU shut off anyway, so there's no way there should be a grounding signal unless there's a broken wire. I also will not be driving with this setup for very long as ultimately I will be replacing and removing all of this to put in a more permanent solution when I get my final fan set up and I'm done testing. So the next step is to go inside the car and set up the Sniper EFI unit. So 
So here we are at the basic gauge setup that I use. When doing this configuration, all you have to do to set up the fans if you're using the basic wires is return to the base menu at home, go to tuning, go to system, and go to outputs. These are the blue and green wire that we pulled apart to use on the relays. As you can see here, I've set it up with temperature ranges already. Ideally, what you're shooting for is temperatures where the fans shut off at or above the thermostat setting for the engine because it's not really effective to cool a radiator if there's no water moving through it, but also are wide enough that the fans are not constantly turning on, turning off, turning on, turning off, and constantly stressing out your relays or the fans themselves. So in this case, I've set my fan on temperature at 200, fan off temperature at 185 for the first one, and the second fan at 215 and 190. What that does is as soon as my thermostat has opened and started warming the radiator, it will build up to 200. This fan will come on. If only one fan is needed, it will cool back down to just above the thermostat opening temperature and then shut off. If it exceeds 200 and keeps going, I've got a little buffer in here before it hits the temperature to trigger the secondary fan, which will help bring it back down just below the temperature of the first fan and then shut back off. I've never actually had both these fans run at the same time, except for when I was testing two really cheap Chinese fans together. With the Mishimoto setup, they always seem to be able to do it with just the one. So for your setup, you will have to play with these ranges to figure out what is most effective. In order to set these, simply touch it and drag your range to where you want it. Now, one consideration to make is, you can't have an invalid range where, for instance, the minimum is greater than the maximum or the maximum greater than the, or below the minimum. So if I try to drag this down under what my off point is, the system will tell me. That can be pretty annoying because you have to constantly jump in and out of menus if you got weird ranges. So if you want, I would set the fan on temperature on both first with the off temperatures as the minimums and then drag them up to continue. Once you have this configured, you can test the fans from in here by simply taking your temperatures, dragging them down to unreasonable levels, and then finding out if the fans engage. There we go with the Mishimoto fan engaged, so I know that that relay worked. I can then return it back to where it was before, and it's not gonna shut off until the minimum temperature is returned. And now it's off. Once you have these ranges set, you'll be able to go driving and test it out. I suggest using the gauge setup for multi-gauge sensors. On this screen, you have right in the top center the actual temperature that the fans are seeing from the temperature sensor. You also see your battery voltage in case your draw is too high or having any issues with your alternator. And you get some other temperature information like the intake temperature, or the position and duty cycles, ignition timing, AFR, those sorts of things to get an idea of what else may be causing a problem if it isn't related to the fans you're working with. Overall, this screen is what I use probably 90% of the time while I'm driving around. Well, there you have a basic setup with a Sniper EFI controlling electric fans. Ultimately, just remember that the blue and the green wire that are for the fans from the Sniper EFI are grounding triggers and to attach them accordingly to the relay and to ensure that you have good connections throughout your system. Ideally, if you're going to be installing this in something like a daily driver that you're going to leave in the configuration for a long period of time, you should do your best to incorporate the wires into the harnesses and protect them. Use heat shrink on all your connections and guarantee that you've got either siliconed or uh, soldered connections everywhere you're working. In this setup, I've got this well enough that I trust it for quite a while and I will be doing a lot of testing with this setup before I finally move it to its final installed configuration with one large fan. So thank you all for watching this video. I hope something in this video was useful to someone out there. If you like these videos, like and subscribe. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video.